Welcome to the Better Late Than Never fourth Amazing Race 27 recap episode of the URT Mumble Podcast. My name is Michael Harmstone and joining me, as always, is our Canadian who doesn't particularly like getting spit in the face, Logan Saunders. Morning. And the Australian whose computer ensured that this would be a to-be-continued podcast, Ben Powell. Well... And at least I warned you of what your intro was going to be. Yeah, in case you didn't guess, Ben, Michelle and Logan did a podcast for episode four and you know it mysteriously disappeared when he was trying to edit it. It's, it'll, it'll, it'll be henceforth be known as the lost episode. Yeah, pretty much. And there's so many spitting discussions. Actually, we mostly talked about like, uh, what did we dis- what did we discuss that we probably won't discuss this week, Logan? Um, I don't, can't remember what we discussed too much. I know we made, yeah, we did make a lot of spitting jokes. Um, Giraffe boy job? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, now I remember. You've missed a fun episode. It's just too bad that, that Windows decided to be a... Stupid hole. Yeah, that's good. That, that's the PG version of it. So, previously, nine teams raced from Buenos Aires to rural Argentina. What was the name of the town again, Ben? San Antonio de Areco. Yeah, it was quite good, that. And the pits, they, they checked out, the, and this like they're checking out from the pit stop, which is the uh, Parque Crioli a Museo Gauchesco Ricardo Gorio... Giraldes. Yeah, that was all what he said. <laughs> <laughs> In the first, like, Tanner and Josh won the Relay Express Pass, and they tried to use it to plot Justin and Diana's elimination. Uh, they also won the third leg, narrowly beating Justin and Diana, and both teams were told that there would be a double U-turn on the next leg. Denise kicked up a fuss at the detour, while Tiffany and Krista stepped up a gear. Ernest and couldn't catch up from the last leg, and they became their third team to get sent home. And teams must now fly to Livingston, Zambia, and find the Makumi village to receive both a traditional welcome and the next clue. Unfortunately, the dogs from this episode couldn't continue on to the next leg. Yeah, there was one that befriended Justin and Dana at the start of the leg as well. The dogs were black... replaced by baboons. It was a black dog as well, so very symbolic. And also, Tanner doesn't seem to know Dana's name. Ah, the patriarchy. <laughs> and Tanner and Josh also try and pull the 20s and shoot the W turn with Kelsey and Joe. That conversation was so staged. Well, I mean, I'm sure they had it, like, minutes... What, what I imagine would have happened is they had it minutes earlier, and then the cameras didn't catch us, so like, hey, guys, can you have this discussion again for us and very clearly lay out what's going to happen because the viewers are going to have a really tough time following it? Yeah, I love that Tanner and Josh are basically the very, very bland versions of GameBots. Eh, I object to that, because, like, um... I say it's the it is the rivalry they're having of Justin and Diane that are making them interesting. Actually, I imagine in an, any other season, like say insert season between Unfinished Business and All Stars here, I imagine any of those seasons they'd just be like I don't know Elliot and Andrew. Who are they exactly? Hey, don't slag off Elliot and Andrew. I will. I will slag off whoever I want. And um, wait, that came out wrong. I think that's the first time anyone's ever actually mentioned Elliot and Andrew on an Amazing Race podcast. I honestly can't picture them. They were <laughs> exactly twins. One's a musician, one's a footballer. Wow, that that does nothing for me. And we talked about the Rogers family extensively just a week ago from season twenty. Okay, I'll take your word for it. I do agree, though, that Tanner and Josh are more interesting because of the rivalry. Because when I think of, I don't know, like Gino and Jesse, no, oh. they didn't really, you know. They did everything, Glenn, but with Tanner and Josh, at least their obsession with Justin and Diana in a Shambo-like way is is kind of entertaining in ways. Yeah, it benefits them greatly, having a rivalry. A lot of teams do benefit from certain situations, like Kelly and Siobhan this season benefit from being first boots, and this season benefited as well, I imagine. A lot of teams benefit from staying out of um, rivalries which could have ended badly, getting rivalries which, which made the, made them and, and their, which made them, which made their adversaries Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's the same here. Like, it's not it's not fair to say that like um T- Tanner and Josh are like um well I guess they're sort they're sort of boring they're sort of boring but they've got a story behind them and it's making them not sort of boring. Yeah, once either they or Justin and Dana get U turned, that story will end. Or we could obviously go the Dave and Connor route and have like twenty twenty confessionals an episode about his hamstring. I mean, everyone, everyone would enjoy that, wouldn't they? The reason Dave and Connor got so many confessionals is because they won the season. Tanner and Josh are not winning this season. Quoted, at least Tanner was able to quote Napoleon Dynamite near the start as well. Come again? Near the start of the leg, he's like, he was to talking about Justin, and he had like such a Napoleon Dynamite voice where he's like, gosh, he's annoying. I've never seen that movie, so... You've never seen Napoleon Dynamite? 
Well, I guess it's my demographic, but it's not my thing. And it's Kelsey and Joey, Tanner and Josh, Justin and Dana, Jasmine and Danielle, Cindy and Rick, Denise and James Earl. And then we get probably the funniest screen cap so far, which is Denise getting spat in the face. She was not happy. I thought only the white people got spat in the face. Did you Did you guys <laughs> notice that? <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I can't believe I can't believe that Zambia is such a racist country. I mean, I'm going to get on my computer and complain about it right now. I and then I, I bet they're not even going to defend themselves. They're so. Ugh. I did not see that complaint, but that is awesome. No, like this was very prevalent. Like people online were arguing, saying, "What? You really don't think that the <laughs> that the or it was the white people being spat in the face and everyone else got spat on their feed? Was that the discussion?" Yeah, or was so. it the other way around? And, and then it was like um, people were overanalyzing, like um, oh, they they spat they spat the they spat Asian people in the crotch and the black people in their feet. Yeah. It's like <laughs> even though Joe and like, Kelsey were also spat on the crotch. Well, maybe they're one sixteenth Thai. I don't know. Maybe they like Thai food. I suspect that production might have told uh, or warned the lady ahead, go for Denise because she'll be awesome. Denise has, in these two episodes, which I just watched back to back, Denise became glorious. She already was. I mean, it is. Like, she was like the only, she was the only thing keeping episode three afloat. Yeah, she went into a whole new level of awesomeness, I think, in, in these two episodes. Between her embarrassing James Earl all the time, to say, saying stuff like, I gave birth to you! Or, you're my only son, don't die! Right, before he was about to do the bridge swing. And once teams get to the aerodrome, they find out that it is the next route marker, which is the roadblock, which is who wants to rise above the smoke that thunders. In this roadblock, one team member must take a flight in a micro light above Victoria Falls and find the flag on Knife's Edge Bridge, which has their next clue. Did you also hear about the other issue with the spinning Michael? That all the racers could have gotten AIDS. Well, that's racist. Not not, not for you, but like, the, the, you know, the accusation is very, very <laughs> racist. But that's what they're saying, like, oh, it's disgusting that people would, that they let uh, people from a third world country spit on the racers. No joke, this actually happened. Given that I basically landed home less than 36 hours ago, I've barely had a chance to even check the Facebook pages, so... Don't worry, where your Gossip Central, where your TMZ, or uh, where, where LB, life's good. I saw Logan's complaint blog from week three, which greatly amused me. People being cray cray. Uh, so it's Kelsey, Diana, Jasmine, Rick, Logan, Denise, and Krista doing the roadblock. Because Tanner and Josh use their express pass on the roadblock. On the coolest task of the season, they decide to skip that one. Exactly. Yeah. The only the only real point of the task was, oh, uh, we need a we need an excuse to show off Victoria Falls in high definition. Uh, why don't we just fly the races around in a tiny plane and have them watch it, and also scare the shit out of Krista? <laughs> well, it was a switchback to. Um, to Major Race 12's visit to Italy. It was also a switchback to the where the, you know, in Major Race 1 was actually filmed. I know. Did, they actually went to Knife's Edge Bridge as well, didn't they? Yes, yeah. they did. I may be incorrect here, but wasn't the actual clue for Knife's Edge Bridge uh, something about the smoke that thunders as That's well? That's what I told you last week then, yes. Well the, well, the listeners weren't here last week, Logan. So you get to take all the credit for it. <laughs> But yes, the the the, the was, flying the smoke was, that yeah. thunders is was indeed the clue from season one, the very first clue I think. So it's Joe and Bill said that's got to be Victoria Falls. Yeah, and then Kevin and Drew said that's got to be uh, that's got to be Yemen. I am very glad that we got, we got to see the return of Swing You Fat Bastard Swing just in on the next subject. episode. Yeah, just on that subject. Yeah. Like, it was pretty disappointing last episode, but we didn't get any mention of the fact that this is the first location of the, of the Amazing Race, but, like, it was good to see, it was good to see it in the second episode. Also, this episode, like, sort of confirmed to me how, um, you know, I, I don't, I, I personally don't mind seeing repeat locations, or repeat tasks in, in repeat locations, because, you know, new teams, new dynamics, new, new moments, really. Like, I doubt we would have gotten anything, I doubt, like, in season one, we, we would have gotten anything like we got from Logan and Chris, so. Well, anything on that level. I don't really mind a repeat location when it's been 325 rounds and about 14 years since they were last there. And also, we got a new country out of this. Yeah. I mean, it's not like there's going to be like some old uh, shut-in internet fan going, Oh, they went here in season two. I, oh, they're getting lazy <laughs> with their thing. Why don't they bring back the fast forward every, why don't they bring back the fast forward every episode? Ben, that is not how Logan talks. <laughs> Love you, Logan. <laughs> 
He doesn't love you, really. <laughs> What's that about? My favorite thing about the Roblox is that they use the DK Jungle Parkway music for Mario Kart 64. Did they? I'm yes, sure that's, they it sounded did. very similar to it uh, when they were doing the Roblox. Uh, and Kelsey and Joey make a secret alliance with Justin and Dana. And Jasmine and Danielle are the only team to go to the wrong bridge. And once teams complete the roadblock, they must now travel to the town of Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe and find the Shoestringers Backpackers Hostel to receive their next clue. And at the hostel, Tanner and Josh realise that there's an hours of operation, 8am, and they've wasted their express pass. On a plan that they weren't even trying to execute in the first place. They were supposed to use it on the detour, or maybe the U-turn was going to be right after the roadblock, and they were really foreseeing a twist. These two legs, more than anything, prove that Tanner and Josh had never seen The Amazing Race before. To be fair, back in Season 21, Gary and Will did the exact same thing. Like, um, in Episode 3, I think it was, after they left the starting line, they got to the first task, and they're like, Where's the U-turn? Where's the U-turn? And they were, they, were the self, they were the self-proclaimed super fans of the season. Yeah. They were yeah. supposed to be like... That, their entire thing was, that, oh, we've seen every single season and we've seen every single episode. We are, the, we are the best super fans that have ever come out of the show. And it's like, you know, that. So it's not mutually... So, in like, you know, that sort of thing is not mutually exclusive, so... Also, I think their reasoning was that one of them, I can't remember who was supposed to do it, like, was afraid of heights, so... Yeah, ta- Tanner the uh, Hamstring. Tanner the Hamstring. <laughs> His new nickname is Hamstring, I've decided. <laughs> That'll catch on. Well, well, we get to see him do, do a bungee jump next week, which is going to be hilariously funny. Uh, so, it's Tanner and Josh and Justin and Dana leaving at 8am. Kelsey and Joey and Cindy and Rick at 8.10, and then Logan and Chris, Denise and James Earl, Jasmine and Danielle, and Tiffany and Krista at 8.20. And it's a detour, which is co-op or cocaine. And in, in co- co-op, teams must varnish, varnish and polish a giraffe model to receive their next clue. And in croquet, teams must score five points against a local player to receive their next clue. What I love about the whole Waste of the Express Pass is that it's like the 11th season in a row where the Express Pass has made zero difference to the race. Like, it was such a wily Coyote moment that this was supposed to be the one time where the Express Pass was going to drastically change the race or do anything to it, and then it just, they just waste it and it does nothing. It's a decent plot device, I guess. Well, it's like, the most exciting plot line the Express Pass, I think, has ever had, but it just had the the blamest result possible. Uh, are you, which is are hilarious. You skipping out, are you skipping over Jessica and John's entire series of unfortunate events in Indonesia? Oy vey. But the Express Pass didn't make a difference there. They just had the same result as if they didn't have it. The only difference is that they just looked ten times more like an idiot because of this whole situation. But they, but that was the that was an interesting plotline revolving around the Express Pass. Like if they had actually used the Express Pass, they probably would have, you know, gotten their act together. So yeah, I I think it's been plot relevant, but not like plot changing. I guess. It's never been the do- all-encompassing, dominating plot of a season. Like, I mean, if Pierre, if like Pierre and Michelle had like made the final three in the Amazing Race Canada too, that would have been more prevalent. But as it stands, it's sort of like a um, B plot of the season rather than anything that's sort of like all-encompassing. Like the first few episodes of this season, it was it was the A plot basically because they gave us nothing from anyone else ever. But as it stands right now, it's probably just going to go. It's you know, it's flatlined as a plot. And croquet seems way, way easier to me. It was, it was probably worded a bit weirdly in the instructions because, you know, I can't really see any reason why you'd actually go to the co-op because, I mean, that's... I, it, speaking as a viewer who watches on television, though, like, I imagine, like, it was probably more intimidating because professional player, croquet, a sport that, that I doubt a lot of them actually played before. And... The other one had a set time you could finish in, so it probably seemed like the better option at the time. But it didn't end up being that, so, yeah. In Brazilian croquet, you can only use your feet. Who was it who said, I feel like Thor? I think it was Justin, wasn't it? I guess so. I don't know, I don't remember that. Yeah, so someone, when using the mallet, it was either Justin or uh, Joey, said, I feel like Thor right now. So, Justin and Dana are the first to leave croquet, with Tanner and Josh in second. Uh, Denise and James Earl in third, and Kelsey and Joey in fourth. Cindy and Rick leave Cove in fifth. Logan and Chris in 6th, Jasmine and Danielle in 7th, and 
Uh, Tiffany and Krista in last. And teams 95, <laughs> 99. <laughs> yeah, we skipped over the entire tasks. Yeah. Like the like in the co op how all the teams are like blinding each other with the with the polish and the stain. <laughs> Logan getting I don't think she could see anything by the end. <laughs> neither could neither could Cindy and like go even going into this, like going into the crocodile cage, coming out of the crocodile cage, Tiffany and Chris still have this stuff on their face. And we got another awesome week from Logan and Chris as well. We forgot to mention how uh Krista was being completely trolled by the pilot in the in the biking roadblock there. Where he just suddenly plummeted just to scare the crap out of Krista. <laughs> We're going down, Krista. <laughs> so mean. <laughs> but yeah, and then the guy completely trolling Tiffany and Krista at the detour there, just shouting arbitrary percentages until they were done. What he should have done is started off at ninety five and then kept going down. Yeah. Ninety five? Nine no, no, ninety, no, ninety two. That would have made no. it to, that would that would have made it too obvious though. Like it wasn't it wasn't a, it wasn't a hard task, just like time consuming. So I mean, going ninety five, seventy five would have been made it too obvious to me anyway. But like you know, but yeah, we just need an auctioneer with Tiffany and Krista for that task. <laughs> just shout out random numbers. Also, Logan and Chris one of the smallest giraffe. So what, what were you going to get with giraffe blowjobs? Oh, because uh, the instructors kept telling them to blow on it, oh, and right. then Tiffany blows on the... It's either Tiffany or Chris, Krista who blows on the giraffe in a slightly interesting manner. Well, then it, like, he, he, didn't, he didn't instruct them to blow on them. He just, like, instructed to let them dry. And they were, oh, and yeah, all, dry. All the, was, all the teams, all, all the teams just grabbed, the, like, these huge, huge things of cardboard and just started, like, waving them. And then and then Tiffany just decided, oh, dry, I'll blow at it. That will help. <laughs> We are f- we are three mis- responsible, mature adults here. Uh, so teams must now head to the pit stop, which is the Rose of Charity Orphanage, and they have to pass the double U turn first, and then ba- make a donation to the orphanage at the mat. The last team to check in here may be eliminated. Can we talk about how can we talk about them having a double a double U turn at an orphanage. Yeah, it's, that's all Logan's tweet about um, having one next season at a funeral parlour. So Justin and Diana are the first to check in. And it's a keep on racing leg, and they did, didn't have a prize announced for some reason. And they didn't get a prize? prize. No, there wasn't. Justin uh, confirmed that online. Plus, they didn't U-turn Tanner and Josh. They kept up their secret alliance deal they had uh, at the start of the day. An it's... alliance that nobody thought would be intended by either side. <laughs> and Tanner and Josh come in second, and because they use the express pass on the roadblock, they have to decide at the map who they're going to give it to. And Phil tries to hurry them up by actually telling them before anything else that it's a keep on racing line. And they decide to give it to Denise and James L. Can we also talk about how like Denise and James L have been like surprising the clutch this leg? Like they come they came in the fifth they came in the last flight, they went in the last departure time and they somehow ended up in third. I didn't catch that. That is impressive. Yeah, they they did a massive jump somehow. Well, Denise's background in Crocane and Alabama, didn't didn't you know? They have a they have a they have an Olympic level croquet team. You gotta go out there. Oh, I love her. She's awesome. I th- they they have been surprisingly good though. They they came in fourth in the first leg. Like it was like fourth, third, sixth, fourth, fifth, sixth or something. Fourth, third, sixth. Yeah, it's fourth, third, sixth, third, first. Yeah, they're like the pretty un- they're pretty unassuming, but there there are fairly strong teams so far, at least compared to the rest of the mid pack. Uh, so, Kelsey and Joey come in fourth, Cindy and Rick come in fifth, uh, Logan and Chris attempt to donate $20 and get guilt tripped by uh, by Phil, and they check in in sixth, Jasmine and Danielle check in in seventh, and Tiffany and Krista attempt to U-turn Justin and Diana, and then get a last place for their troubles. You know what, I was, we were talking about this last week, but we were thinking that at the, when teams show up to the orphanage there, that there should have been a good luck ceremony with the ladies spain on all the kids. But then the teams would have no idea what was going on, and they'd be completely shocked and horrified by what was happening. But then just realize, oh, it's just a good luck ceremony. But then, like, they'd have no, they'd have no good luck. They'd have no good luck going into the leg. I mean, what? I mean, without the, without a ceremony, Denise, Denise's plane probably would have, you know, flown into Victoria Falls. Yeah. <laughs> Chris's, Chris's pilot would have actually, I don't know, like, actually dropped her into the, dropped her into Nice Edge. Yeah, right into the side of the bridge and. Jasmine and Danielle would have actually figured out what country they're in, thus uh, not making the viewers uh, have a good laugh. 
also there's quite a few teams left where one person has done three roadblocks. Because mm. Denise and James Earl have, Tanner and Josh have, Kelsey and Joey have. The... Yeah, this this really was this really was like a leg which um, you do the same thing as last leg where the 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 less strong partner does it, but it wasn't worded that way, so understandable, I guess maybe. No, not really. No, like you're at, you're at Potoka Gorge, and the, the clue set the clue says is the the clue for the roadblock is Gorge. Like, did they really think it was going to be an eating contest or whatever? You know, that's the that's the, this is like the second task of the season where you like even stuff out. You don't like you know, you don't keep on going lopsided because you think oh it might be a little difficult. Can we address the whole Logan and Chris donating twenty dollars thing and the super duper negative reaction about it online? Yeah. I reckon that orphanage was guilt tripping them. Have you seen? That? They've got a fa- they've got a Facebook page. They have a, a, like about one thousand likes there. I think they're doing pretty well for themselves. Last time they did this sort of thing, it was that stupid twist in season nineteen, the one where it was the double, double elimination leg, and there was that tiny sign that said you got to donate all your money. Oh, I like that. I mean, I can't really, I couldn't really see Ethan, Ethan and Jeb, you know, or Ron and Bill. I think it was. Yeah, I can't really see either of them. I couldn't really see either of them like providing entertainment factor throughout the season. So, like the only the only plot line that Ace and Jenna had was, "Oh, we're on Survivor. We're not we're not going to tell anyone." Hey, did you guys did you guys know they're on Survivor? They're on Survivor. Man, that's greedy. And then there was like, and it's like, um, Ethan, where'd you put the clue? I know where I put the clue. Ethan, where'd you put the clue? I don't know where I put the clue. Oh, here's the clue. Scene. Yeah, that sign said um, said that they had to donate all the money, and it was the same in the. India, like in Amazing Race Canada 3. But the clue this time didn't say they had to donate all the money. At all. It's not like they couldn't check in. Yeah, exactly. Phil guilt-tripped them into... Spending the the production's money. Exactly, into putting all their money in, in there. Because they were well within their rights to not. Yeah, they don't know how much money they're going to get when they open up the next clue envelope. I mean, if... I'm sure... You I'm sure, sort like, of re- you know... I'm sure that it's actually going to like compensate for the fact that they donate to an orphanage. I mean, it's not like they're, it's not like they're like um, riding the race legs in reverse. Mm-hmm. With the teams, they're not going to. They're on such an adrenaline rush that they're not going to stop and think, "Oh yeah, production is is going to make us donate all of our money, and they're not just going to leave us broke for the next leg." I mean, with Logan and Chris, I don't think they watch the race too much to even have that really uh, come across okay. their mind at all. They're too busy. They're too busy chasing Kanye West. Yes. So teams must now make their way to the Lookout Cafe and search for the next clue, and they've got $65 for this leg. Bill didn't donate anything to the orphanage. Well, what's up with that? He's telling everybody to put money in the box, and he didn't put anything in it himself. I mean, what a what a jerk. I did notice that um, Phil launched a an appeal for people to donate money to the orphanage. So it's probably to beat his own guilt. Like I said, they're probably doing pretty well as themselves. They have a Facebook page and everything. God, there's greedy orphanages. Like, can't they, you know, follow America's example and pull themselves at the bootstraps? Just for the record, Ben is being deeply ironic there. I do have to say, though, that the whole scene was geniusly edited with all the reactions from the kids when Logan only put $20 in the box at first. That, that just, I, I even rewound that because of how much that killed me with, how, with all the reaction shots. And then Phil say, no, it just... Why not just put everything in there? Everyone else did. You cheap uh, bastards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hear that Logan and Chris don't even tip when they're out in restaurants either. They just put a 5% tip, and then and then the waiter said, well, everyone tipped 15 to 20%. What's what's wrong with you guys? So who, uh, once teams get to the Lookout Cafe, they find out it's a roadblock, which is who wants to gorge themselves, and in this roadblock, one team member must face a switch back to the very first task in Amazing Race history, where they have to swing, fat bastard swing, across the Potoka Gorge to receive their next clue. So, not not go to Madison Square Garden? And Justin, Josh, Kelsey, James Earl, Cindy, Chris, Danielle, and Krista do the roadblock. Can we talk about the, sna- the like, the, um, check attack led snake that was leading out of the, um, leading away from the Lookout Cafe, and allowed Jasmine and Danielle and Tiffany and Krista to actually get further up in the placements. Before oh. I do the roadblock, I'm going to check my Fitbit heart rate, if that's okay with you guys. Oh, 200 beats per minute. Okay. <laughs> that's high. <laughs> oh, Justin did a, an awkward uh, Fitbit shout-out as well. Yeah, there's even the, a deleted uh, online uh, clip, and it's just right after uh, 
right after Justin uh, does the roadblock and they're trying to find their taxi. And Justin's constantly checking his Fitbit heart rate, saying, I've never had a heart rate monitor before. This is really neat. I mean, I mean come on, guys. I mean, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be awesome to have, like, a calorie counter and a heart rate, runner on, heart rate, um, heart rate counter on your wrist? Wherever you go, it could track your calories throughout the day. But yeah, totally not sponsored, sponsored by Fitbit. Just for the record, my dad has the Fitbit. <laughs> Just for the record, they don't sell them here. Oh, Fitbit well, doesn't care about Australia. Yeah, anything to say about the robot? It's funny because when you think about the season one, uh, the season one jump, the video quality is so much lower when all the teams are doing it that they couldn't really show too much things in detail. But fast forward from season one to season 27, not only do you have a really high tech, uh, uh, helmet cam, but now teams are also wearing like heart rate monitors on their <laughs> around their wrist as well, and it's just in so much more detail compared to the what they were able to uh, show off with the same task in the first season. Speaking of heart rate monitors, I'm not sure if I talk about this. But, um, uh, this is like completely not related at all, but uh, in Big Brother Brazil, the um on the live shows for the evictions, what they do is um. All the contestant, all the contestants that are up for up for eviction are actually like strapped to heart rate monitors that mo- that shows their heart rate live on television. So like you know once so like you, they get their name announced and there's like a slight there's a, like a spike in their in their heart rate as as whether whether they find out they're going to be evicted or not. So you actually get to see like live reactions to being voted out to being voted out by public on live television, which is pretty cool. Also in Bulgaria, I think they crashed a plane into into a house or something. Or they had or the theme was plane crash. On Bulgaria, they also gave a guy a heart attack on Survivor. He was seventy-five years old, wasn't he? Yeah, or something. Yeah, and in Spain, and in Spain last year, they had a they had a goat as contestant. <laughs> well, technically, he was like the pet of a of a um. Technically, he was the pet of a contestant, and he was like tied to him, and she was tied to him, and it's like the dog from season one with the with the, the American version of Big Brother, where they had the dog in the house for I think a week or two. <laughs> They had one in a, they had one in the Australian one as well. Actually, they have like compulsory. They have a dog in every season of the um, Australian re, the reboots, like from 2012 onward. And also, they had like a they got, had like a robotic dog as a pet in the um, first Australian one, and then they end up tossing it over the wall because they were so unimpressed of it. Like like a um like one of those um you know those like toys that are like um sort of robotic dogs that are like um I'm not I'm not turning into Gary Busey here. I swear this is a real thing. <laughs> Like those, like, like you know, those like toys, which is like they had like motion sensors and they could like do little things. Like I think they could do flips. I'm not sure if they could back in 2001, but I know the ones I'm thinking of can. I'm not sure. They're probably around. But like they had one of those that was just like the product placement, basically, and they just like gave them to the contestants and like um, just to like you know work with. And like they got so bored of it, I think they ended up tossing it over the wall. You know what was the biggest outrage about this episode of Amazing Race? No robotic dogs. There was no intro. Yeah, I was thinking that. <laughs> I'm still missed about no robotic dogs. However, I did notice something very important, which I mentioned to Ben earlier. One of the screen caps in the intro is, if you look closely, one of the Paris locks on the bridge says Denise and James Earl on it. It flashes up for like a tenth of a second. They're just playing outright spoilers on top, on top of season-long previews. They're now putting outright spoilers in their own intro. Arguably, it's not spoiling anything now, because obviously we know they make it to Paris, because that's next week. The favorite part about Denise this week is the really embarrassing dance she does inside the taxi at the start of the round. It was very Marge Simpson-like. Every Simpson dance now, bump, bump, <laughs> bump, bump, bump. Okay, I'll go to the, I'll go to the dance. <laughs> I can't do I can't do the I can't do the like um twelve twelve pack of cigarettes uh, smoking voice so or the the Nolan twin smoking voice basically. Did, did but, you notice that Phil is trying to copy things out of uh, John Montgomery's playbook by suddenly having the urge to participate in a lot more of the tasks. He's feeding the crocodiles. I can't do an underwater voice. He gets to play with Lucky Plato and Bun Bun. So once teams complete the roadblock, they go straight to the detour, which is crocs or canoes, which I believe in the actual clue may have been called paddles. Is that like wood versus co-op from the previous round? No, it's co-op or cocaine. Well, there was, they called co-op and wood the same thing for the detour Sorry, last did say, week. Did you say co-op and cocaine? No, croquet. Good, I was about to say... That's what I thought the first time, too. I thought Michael said cocaine the first time way back as well. It did sound like they said cocaine. 
And I I actually did say it the first time as well. I was waiting to see if either of you picked up on me saying it. In this day tour, I haven't in five weeks. <laughs> okay, Tyler and James. In this de- detour, t- teams must go to a wild Hollywood party. Anyways, uh, so yeah, Crocs or Canoe, and you said it was also referred to as Paddles in the Clue? Yeah, I think it was, because I think Justin and Diana said we're doing Paddles. So pretty much either feed crocodiles or paddle across the Zambezi River and hoist somebody up into a vulture's nest to grab a clue. I'm not 100% which one I would have picked. Crocs, for me. I would have chosen Crocs. Not not uh, not the shoes so much, I'm not a big fan of those, but... Uh, Feeding the crocodiles would be more of my thing. put on a pair of socks and then put on crocs over an eighth. <laughs> That's for family edition, uh, then. Mm. You know, you know what they should have done this leg. They should have taken a page out of the Redonculus Races book and have them, um, you know, and have them on. I don't know, just like uh, paddle over paddle over Victoria Falls and take a selfie while they fall. I mean, they could do that, can't they? What they should have done is. Uh taken a page out of Israel's book and had it be a non-elimination last time but the non-elimination penalty, instead of being a speed bump, they just make them have to wear all their winter clothes in uh, Brazil. But in this case they have to wear Crocs for the entire leg. I didn't care for the redonkulous race, just for the record. <gasps> so, in Crocs, teams must go croc cage diving and feed two pieces of meat to them to receive the next clue. And in canoes, teams must paddle across the Zambezi and then one team member must hoist their partner up to a vulture's nest to find the next clue. Uh, and Justin used to be a canoeing guide, and Diana rode in high school. I don't think anyone, anyone. I don't think anyone was really tuning in to see. Oh my God, they're going to paddle down a river, <laughs> compared to oh my God, they're getting into a in a, to a cage with crocodiles. So at least the vulture's nest was supposed to be somewhat extreme. Because <laughs> we were just waiting for the vulture to swoop down and pick somebody up. Well, didn't you hear? Tanner needs to lose weight, so it wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have worked. Yeah, you know, the vulture just struggles and then slowly falls to the ground. So, Justin and Diana are the first to leave canoes, with Tanner and Josh in second. Diddy and James Earl use the express pass on Crocs to leave in third, with Kelsey and Joey in fourth. Um, wait, wait, no, no, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Denise and James Earl left in second. No, they left in third. That's, I think that's what it said, yeah, on the, on the subtitle at the bottom of the screen. I thought it was slightly inaccurate, but it, it really shows, yeah, that the Relay Express Pass twist was a really stupid idea. So it's like, oh, we're just going to use the Express Pass now. Okay. And at least Tanner and Josh's paddling was slightly better than John Carroll and Rob the General's paddling. Yeah. Rob wasn't here. And teams must now find the lion encounter to find their next clue. And once there, they have to walk with the lions to hunt for their next clue. Terrible pun. Wouldn't it be great to walk with lions? We discussed in, in the last episode how, like, um... We tried to match up the date of Cecil actually getting shot with the filming, the filming schedule of the of this, and I actually looked it up. Uh, I th- I'm pretty sure Cecil Cecil was shot on um, July 1st, I think it was in Zimbabwe, and the film the film the um the first episode of the Amazing Race 27 started filming in uh, was it July 22nd, I think, uh, June 22nd. Yeah, so it would have been just so, after it happened, or just before. This is uh, this this is gonna be on my mind all the time now. We have to work. We have to we have to work this out. We have to put our heads together. And well, work it, was this not, out. it was nine. Day, it would have been nine days after the start line. So my guess would be is that it happened that is that they were there either the same day or like one day after. Nine day nine days. I think Phil said ten. So they were there the day after Cecil was shot, and the task didn't didn't get switched out at all. They could have been a few miles away from where a beloved lion was shot as they walked with the lion thinking, oh, this is a really cool task. That's kind of funny. But uh, a lot of people online were very angry about this task, saying that the Mason race is supporting the... The lions will give them AIDS. Yeah, predictably, (laughs) Facebook was not happy. They were just as angry about this as the whole spitting thing. It's like, that's funny too, is that, you know, last season we have the whole spitting on potatoes launching an actual protest... And then this season we have the whole spitting incident with the good luck ceremony. And then the only other thing that's non-spitting related to be up that high is with teams walking with lions. What exactly was the whole, the whole brouhaha about? I guess for some reason they think that uh, with the enclosure that once the lions are released out in the wild, that it's just open season on them. And I guess the wherever, wherever place they were at are supposedly promoting this. Yeah, um- 
24th of October, Amazing Race needs to watch Bloodlines. That is what are going to ha- is going to happen to these poor lions. What a load of rubbish that was spewed out about rehabilitating them back into the wild. Yeah, right, so let's train them to be around humans. Shame on AR for this dreadful error. Reading the ama- reading comments from people who on who frequent the Amazing Race Facebook page is a clear indicator of who in the perhaps deep south of America pro- probably should not be provided with keyboards. <laughs> and now there is a um, <laughs> a petition. <laughs> Leslie Moon's CBS CEO and the producer of the Amazing Race, please don't uh, exploit wild animals for the Amazing Race anymore. There's another protest. <clears throat> There's another protest. Oh my goodness! I have to do, and we have to do another. Uh, <laughs> I have to do another Mr. Potato Head like signature on it. How many signatures does it have? Because the spinning on potatoes thing only got about twenty or twenty-one, I think, by the end of it. Just like those poor lions. Four hundred and fifty-seven. Whoa. Okay. That's, so this. That's hmm. slightly more serious. Slightly more serious than spitting on potatoes. <laughs> People care more about majestic lions than they do potatoes, apparently. <laughs> But what, what about those poor farmers? <laughs> the poor farmers. They have to eat them. They have to eat them. They have to live with those. They have to live those. Say that they have to live those potatoes their whole life. And that's rude. Uh, CBS They're CEO and the producer of the Amazing Grace don't exploit wildlife for television. Is the name of it? <laughs> yeah, Denise and James will have to change out of their uh, their pink to avoid startling the lions. I imagine Tanner and Josh have to change it out of their, or- their bright, blinding orange as well. Uh, and there's only two sets of lines available at a time. It's pretty weird that they provided, they colour coded every single team with, um, you know, bright fluorescent, co- black, bright fluoro colours and told them, no, you can't wear them here, the lions will eat you. Lions would not like watching the Amazing Race at home. They're, they're blinded by the, the pink teams, like, oh, Denise and James Earl, get them off my screen. Actually, it probably sounds something a little like, and then they ate someone. And then somebody says Hakuna Matata somewhere in there. That's a warthog, you uncultured swine. We found his aroma like a certain appeal. We could clear the savannah after every meal. I'm a sensitive soul, though I seem thick-skinned. I love the Lion King. <laughs> and we get a, another Logan and Chris meltdown, which is awesome. The meltdown at the detour, that was like, that was happening, or at least was edited consecutively with Tiffany and Krista's whole thing in the cage with the fight with the crocodile. And they were, I'd say they were both equally entertaining that, you know, just me. We're already in last. Like, it was like, we're already in last. Like, oh my god, my toes are sticking through the cage! Ah! I want Tiffany and Krista to stay around purely because of how, how much they are scared of everything by the look of things. They're, pet- they're perpetually happy. Their, their, their entire thing is eternal optimism, which is a good thing to have in a season, which is about, oh, we've got to use the U-turn to take someone out. Oh, we've got to, we've got to use the double express pass to make sure we don't use it, don't use it on a threat or whatever. Blah, 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 blah. We're going to Africa! Woo, tequila. They're the perfect contrast if they keep on racing with uh, Logan and Chris. Like, you know... <laughs> The roadblock is right here. No, we're going to follow Chack Attack uh, 20, 20 miles away from it, then go back there, and then just keep on streaming. We're already in last, we should switch. No, we're already in last, so we should stay. Um, We're already in last, so we'll stay. Okay, we'll stay. Actually, oh we should God, switch. Oh my God, it's got the stick! <laughs> it's got the stick! And for the second time in the episode, Jasmine and Danielle go to the wrong place. Do they know what country it was in this time? Mozambique? Talk about stumbling at the last hurdle. Like, you know, they're in a... Was that healthy- a time? Oh, right, that track stars, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was an unintentional pun. I'll take I'll take it. False start. <laughs> but yeah, talk about stumbling at the last hurdle. Like, you know, they get they get to the um they finish the they finish the detour and then like um they go to the wrong place for the fi- for the final thing before the, the pit stop and then they have to drive they go from one one side of the one side of the reserve was the reserve? It was the reserve, right? They go from one side of the reserve to the other, and they have to go back again, and then they have to wait for the other teams. Oh, wait, no, they don't have to wait for the other teams. They have, and then they, like, mi- misread the clue again, and then they have to wait for the other teams to finish so they can go back and finish what they finish what they screw up in the first place. In the second place, actually. Or, in this case, the last place. Also, one thing I forgot to mention, they did dub um, the Roadblock as a Flashback Friday. They better have, did they have the hashtag? Yes. They did. They did indeed have a hashtag Flashback Friday. So once teams complete the line encounter, they have to head to the Masumi Private Game Reserve, 
the pit stop for this leg of the race. Teams must bring two bowls of fruits with them on their heads. The last teams to check in may be eliminated. This it's like the it's like the showdown in Blades of Glory when they're tr- on their ice skates trying to go through the st- streets. It's that it's that same type of humor where they're trying to go as fast as they can, but in reality, it's a very very slow process. I think it's I think this is the I think. In an episode with a lot of high moments and a lot of great moments, like you know, just the one, one, just like a two-minute segment of one side of the detour alone, this this part, this part of the episode might, might have been actually been the funniest because it's like so self-referential and so in on the joke of like you know the teams are racing to the pit stop, but they're also walking to the pit, walking slowly to the pit stop. So like when it, when they get when like you know when it's down to the final three teams and like um, Jasmine and Danielle are like, they're right there, we can catch up with them. And it's like, they're literally right there, but they're just will be walking distance. <laughs> I'm like, it's hilarious. It was hilarious to watch. I mean, I can't, I can't imagine, I can imagine it being super frustrating actually being there and like seeing them right in front of you and like watch them slowly, slowly check in to seventh place, eliminating you from the race. But as a viewer, it was gold. And, also, I like that they seem to be making them do stuff to get to the pit stop as well. I like that they're just sort of adding in extra little twists, like the having orphanage. To, yeah, like the orphanage or having to take the bowls of fruit onto their heads. Uh, so it's Denise and James Earl who check in in first place. They're such a strong team. They 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 beat Justin and Diana and Tanner and Josh fair and square this leg, and it had nothing to do with skipping an entire task. They get possibly. Uh, the prize that has been easiest to die for, because they get a trip to Phil's friends in a hostel in Bratislava. Slovakia, not Slovenia. Yeah, they, they get to meet all of Phil's friends at Elite Hunting in Bratislava. And it's Justin and Dana in second, Tanner and Josh in third. Kelsey oh, in third. I get it. Finally, jeez. Hack, hacking, hacking into that niche torture porn audience. I'm sure, I'm sure they're all, you know, closet Amazing Race fans. Yeah, a film that I've never seen, nor do I ever want to see. Tanner and Josh in third, Kelsey and Joey in fourth, Tiffany and Krista in fifth, Logan and Chris in sixth, uh, Cindy and Rick in seventh, eliminating Jasmine and Danielle. Uh, so next time teams face their fears with the bungee jump, and they also go to Paris, there's rapping, plane stunts, and more crying from Logan. Are we going to serenade Jasmine and Danielle, who were probably got one of the smallest edits for a team to last five rounds in the Amazing Race? Yeah, they were... Uh, massive presence in the first episode and then we saw nothing of them for four more episodes. Pretty much the only quote I can remember from them is, I'll buy you I'll buy you new feet. And that was about it. It's pretty yeah. surprising that a team that wore bow ties on their head uh, couldn't get more screen time. Well, once well, A, 8th place, and B well, you know, yeah, 8th place. Not much you can do there. I like I like them, you know, they're probably my second favourite team out of all the teams that have been booed. If he dies, we wear bow ties. The only real team that I... The only real team that's, like, you know, not entertaining anyone at all is Joey and Kelsey. I mean, I've, I kind of... I forget half the time they're even news reporters. Well, Joey wasn't thrilled by the size of the croc. He's seen bigger crocs. Uh, really? I mean, that's all I got I, for them for the whole episode. They, they, didn't, they didn't give me much material. I do like that they're that it's probably go, going to end up where there's a, a shit scary task that Joey has to do. I'm looking forward to that because that seems to be what they're hinting at. I, I'm wondering if he accidentally has to do the bungee jump next week because he's just like Kel, Kelsey's a way bigger thrill seeker than I am. I would not do any of this stuff. So any any predictions for next week? Well, Logan and Chris are already breaking down, so it's looking to be entertaining and a rap battle. Interesting. The sequel to Ukrainian hip hop. I think next week might be a double roadblock leg as well. Because the bungee jump is obviously a roadblock, but I think the biplane might be as well. And then the rap battle is an act crowd info? Well, I'm assuming the rap battle is a detour, but I don't know. There'd be a lot of tasks for them to fit into the leg. And, one, and you know, part of it involves being at a train station, which I'm assuming is like taking them out to where the stump, where stump flying will be. Yeah, because that's... We know it's Paris next week, and I'm not 100 percent on where the. Oh, but there's also the, uh, the there's also Lock Bridge, the Lock Bridge. Yeah, the well, they go to the Lock Bridge and end up uh, going to the Arc de Triomphe as well. We know that. So I'm I'm not sure entirely what's going to. So it's only, it's only one leg in Paris, right? Yeah, it's only well, one leg. leg in one leg in France, right? Yeah, it's only one leg in France because they go to Rotterdam in week seven. So 
it's gonna be interesting to see how they fit all of that into one episode. Unless the unless the first roadblock is already in um is still in Zimbabwe. The, well, the first roadblock is in Zimbabwe, definitely the one where Tanner has to face his fear, which I also can't wait for. Mugabe will be on hand to watch the roadblock, and the lady from the village will be on hand to spit on Tanner as he uh, jumps off the bridge. It's for good luck. How does that work? Like, where, would, where, would, where would where would she be? Would she be like floating in the air? Like is 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 she suddenly like? Is she something like Psycho Mantis from Metal Gear Solid? She can just, like, show up at any time and just, like, spit people's faces? No, she stood at the bridge, and when he has to go onto the uh, the platform and sort of uh, cl- climb over or whatever, she, he just uh, looks at the woman and she spits in his face for good luck. What, so she falls backwards? Hopefully. No, I like my, I like my Psycho Mantis idea better. With the Fitbit, like... does it measure? Does the Fitbit measure uh, luck at all, or is that just is that going to be the next upgrade? Yeah, that that is in the brand new Fitbits, the Fitbit Look. Uh, yeah. Sitting luck. Yeah. So, anything else to add about either of these two episodes? Um, I wonder if I like... the other teams will be shown. So, like, Leg Four was all right, but Leg Five was entertainment wise and interesting task wise. I enjoyed that more. Plus, Leg so... Five was pretty hilarious from start to finish. See ya. Thank you very much for joining us. You can join the three of us and Michelle to recap the next episode this coming weekend. If you enjoyed the show, and even if you didn't, please give us a like on YouTube and subscribe and rate the episodes on iTunes. If you want to see what we're rumbling about this week, you can tweet us at MJ Helmstone, at LogSuperGwacky, and at Ink1Y, all of which are spelt in the descriptions everywhere. If you missed our interview with Amazing Race 1's Joe and Bill, you can find that on our iTunes feed, along with our interview with Kat and Jesse, and the interview with Mike and Michelle. And that's on the iTunes feed. And finally, if you're following Celebrity of Rightness Australia, Ben is blogging that all season, which you can find at yatancast.wordpress.com. Thank you again. Bye. 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 Hashtag 1.61. We're not going to have a ginger ginger this week, Logan. I was just condensing it for time. I mean, if there's no, if there wasn't, no, if there wasn't an intro in the actual episode, then there's no hashtag on the podcast. <gasps> hashtag welcome to Africa. I've waited for three weeks for a uh, ha- hashtag super quacky, hashtag ginger ninja. I'm disappointed. Don't force it, Michael. Okay. Hashtag, hashtag <laughs> Flashback Friday. I'll be, Has, I'll, hashtag Bojack Thoughts. I'll be expecting one uh, for the next podcast. Yes. Hashtag Fitbit Heart Attack. Hashtag Giraffe Blowjob. So once again, bye!